You're listening to the RCWR Show with Lee Sanders. And a very good early morning to everybody on Saturday, May 19th, 2012 at 2.15 a.m. You're listening to a very special edition of the RCWR show exclusively for YouTube as it's our Call That Match special. I am, of course, as always, the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders, and I thank you so much for checking out this special. Los Angeles Lakers, they just got done playing against the Oklahoma City Thunder just about 45 minutes ago in a must-win game three as if the Lakers would have lost this game tonight, they would have been down 0-3. And as we all have seen in NBA history, once a team has been down 0-3 in the NBA playoffs, they do not make a comeback. That's it. Stick a fork in it. It's D-O-N-E done. And Lakers, they really grinded it out tonight and pulled one great win as Kobe Bryant, despite only being 9 for 25 with field goals, he went 18 for 18 at the free throw line to help rally his team in a victory as the Lakers beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 99 to 96. And to think, folks, in just a mere handful of hours, the Lakers, Oklahoma City Thunder, they're going to be going at it again in Game 4, as that will be taking place later tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. And what a very active weekend it is going to be over the next 72 hours for the Staples Center in Los Angeles, as they are hosting five events that's going to be going on as they're going to be taking care of five NBA games. They're going to be doing a NHL playoff game. And then they're going to be doing the 120 rider pro cycling race. So it's going to be one crazy weekend down there at the Staples Center. So if you happen to be visiting that area or if you happen to be traveling, make sure that you have made all the necessary arrangements beforehand. Make sure that you've given yourself enough time to take in all the sites and try to be there as early as you can. Have your arrangements be made so that once your event is over, you're able to leave in a timely fashion and get home at a decent time hopefully and i thank you all so much for checking out this youtube exclusive this early morning as we have the wwe over the limit pay-per-view that's going to be coming to us live this sunday may 20th from raleigh north carolina at the pnc arena and folks Though it's not that many matches that's on the card, it is still a very impressive card. And we're going to be talking about that in just a little bit as I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on who I feel is going to come out with these wins. On a side note, before I go any further, I just have to give thoughts as well as prayers to Rosa Mendez, who was involved in a car accident late Friday night, so just a few hours ago, as it was reported that a car had been traveling almost 50 miles per hour, and it struck Rosa's car while she was at a stoplight, and as many as six cars were involved in this accident. Now, Rosa wasn't at fault, and she was immediately taken to the hospital for evaluation. Those are the only pieces of details that is available right now. More information on Rosa's condition will become available uh, right now exclusively through WWE.com as they are saying to check back with them. It's more information becomes available so they'll be the first ones to give us all an update on how she's doing and I saw a picture of her car and it does not look good she has a white four-door ram 
1500 vehicle and the front of it just looks really ridiculous I'm looking at the driver's side of the vehicle her airbags they did come up and it doesn't look like too much damage was done on the driver's side so I think if anything she might have a bruise or two but I definitely think she's going to be okay so Rosa Mendez fans out there just know that she's definitely okay so more information as it comes available but yeah definitely send your thoughts and get well speedy recovery wishes to Rosa Mendez you can actually hit her up on Twitter I believe she has Facebook as well so very active weekend that it's been so far and like we said we got the over the limit pay-per-view that's going to be coming up this Sunday we of course over here at the RCWR show we're definitely going to be doing our post show after the pay-per-view so if you are unfortunate to see the pay-per-view and you're definitely curious what my takeaway is going to be with this pay-per-view definitely check it out as we're going to be airing it immediately after the pay-per-view as we go on live at 11 p.m. Eastern this Sunday so definitely check it out and I'll basically honestly let you know if the pay-per-view was a buy or wait till it comes out on DVD or just dodge it all together now I just have to toot my horn a little bit because last time we did this call that match special I was tackling the TNA sacrifice pay-per-view and I did pretty good I only messed up in one area and the area that I had messed up in was the tag team titles being put on the line against Christopher Daniels and Kazarian as that was the only match that I had messed up all the other matches I got right so I'm feeling a little cocky right now I feel like trying to go for a perfect average so we will see what's definitely gonna happen with this call that match special and as always we love to interact with you all if you all feel that you have a better pick list you can always submit your comments down below as well as you can hit us up with a reply on Twitter now I just gotta mention this real quick before we go any further if you're going to hit us up on Twitter which is at infinity one prod definitely interact with us I had a few people that has sent us some of their video predictions on what was going to happen with our sacrifice pay-per-view and myself and my staff we try to interact with some of these people and get some of their take on what else did they feel was going to happen or just ask them a general question and some replied back others didn't we are all about the interaction can't stress that enough and if you're one of those type of people you just want to submit a video then just let us know that beforehand as when we sit up and we try to interact with people and we don't get that reply back we just kind of feel a little bit disrespected in a sense would be the word it's kind of like one of those deals where you leave somebody a voicemail message and you expect for them to return your call and you don't get the call back it's kind of like okay well why did they say we could leave a message and they'll get back with us so I think that's a great analogy to use so yeah we are all for interacting with the fans we love our fans we love hearing from people heck we love hearing from people that have a great knowledge of wrestling as well uh, just come correct is all we have to say if you're just one of those type of people that just wants to sit up and just hey here's my video then just let us know that but the reason why we like this interaction part when it comes to the call of the match specials is because if it turns out you're right then we definitely want to give you praise on the radio so that's really why we want to know who you are and try to interact with you so in case you are right we do give you that recognition and there was one video that I had got with regards to the sacrifice pay-per-view and 
I tried to interact with this person, but this person never did reply back to me. And he was actually right on some of the matches. I think he actually might have matched all of my picks. I'm not really sure. I was going to try to give him praise, but I never did hear back from the guy. So, very unfortunate. If you want to get plugged, definitely let us know who you are, where you're from, all that stuff. It's not really that hard sides. It's always cool making a new friend, especially those that follow wrestling. So, if you have your picks, definitely submit them at the end of this video down below or you can hit us up on Twitter at Infinity One Prod. You can also hit us up on Facebook at Infinity One production so with that in mind let's go on ahead and let's jump right into it now that we have those formalities out the way we got six matches that's going to be coming up this sunday for the over the limit pay-per-view and i am going to tackle this from the bottom to the top now for those of you that might be a little new to this because this is only our third installment Basically, the way that I approach these matches, I approach them from a writing slash booking standpoint. I've been a writer for about oh, 20 years now, and I've had the liberty of writing short stories, uh, graphic novels, uh, comic books, just a whole lot of underground stuff. And I also used to do a little bit of match booking for a ma and pa wrestling company that's no longer in business so i combine both of these skills that i have and i figure hey what better way than try to apply them to wrestling matches since i know how to tell a story pretty good and i feel i know how to book a match or two pretty good i'm no chief expert but i have enough knowledge so uh, that's how i approach this call that match special so basically what i do i sit up and i pick the winners but aside from picking the winners i also try to determine from a writing standpoint what direction the winners should go through next and what direction the losers should go next now it should be noted just to give you some examples with the sacrifice pay-per-view I had said on the call that match special that Joseph Parks, he definitely needed to interfere in Bully Ray's match against Austin Aries. And in a sense, this would give Austin Aries the distraction that he would need to get on the offense and eventually pick up the win and an upset over Bully Ray. And I was able to call that. And I also had mentioned how during the AJ Styles Kurt Angle match that for a little bit it needed to be just the two of these guys just getting it on one on one but that Kurt Angle did need to pick up the win but that it needed to involve Christopher Daniels and Kazarian as once Kurt Angle realizes that the win over AJ was a little bit tainted because those two guys had got involved all hell would break out aj styles kurt angle they would sit up and join forces clean house get those guys out the building and then have a nice little celebration in the ring amongst themselves and i was able to call that on point so that just gives you some examples right there one other example is i had said that it's about time for tna to toss Samoa Joe a little bit of a bone because he's been in the doghouse for so long and that it would be nice if they put him in the world title picture and I caught that right as he was just on a episode of Impact Wrestling in a qualifying match to be one of the contenders to face Robert Roode at the open fight night pay-per-view so that just gives you a taste of where I go uh, storyline wise with the winners and the losers so now that we have you up to date on that folks let's go on ahead and let's jump right into it this special isn't going to be that long like our 
previous one as we'll have plenty to talk about on our post show special so just rest assured you're definitely going to get your ears worth your ear pleasures worth rather with our post show coming up on Sunday so sit back get yourself a cold one and let's go on ahead and let's jump right into it again the WWE over the limit pay-per-view is this Sunday May 20th starts off at 7 45 p.m. and remember we're going to have that special pre-show that's going to be available at wwe.com and also on youtube on wwe's youtube channel so definitely going to be cool and i love this concept as vince mcmahon has really been loving the numbers and the viewership for these pre-shows he is looking to make this be a regular thing so definitely cool there and since he's going to be making it be a regular thing hey I think that it is awesome and it's really a great way to showcase what those that are a little curious about the pay-per-view can expect so really great idea that Vince McMahon has come up with here and our first match which is going to be a pre-show match is going to see Kane taking on Zack Ryder now there really hasn't been that much of a build-up for this match and I can definitely respect that I can appreciate that that's why it's a pre-show match but at the same time there is a little bit of history between these two men now let's not forget that it was just at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view where Randy Orton had took on Kane and they were in a Falls Count Anywhere match I believe it was where they were just fighting around all over the arena and when they took the fight to the backstage area Zack Ryder would jump on Kane and Kane made brief work of Zack Ryder now nothing has happened really since then so for these two guys to be thrown in a match together it just seems kind of random because there hasn't been any storyline continuity since these two had last cross paths at the extreme rules pay-per-view but nonetheless this is our pre-show opener so with regards to this match the way WWE has been booking Zack Ryder as of late just kind of comes off as if they no longer care about this guy but at the same time they realize that there is those internet fans that really love him that follow him and follow his work and he does sell decent merchandise I don't know how his numbers are doing now since WWE has just repeatedly been burying him time and time and time again I think that Kane is definitely going to pick up the win over Zack Ryder. Now, what direction Kane could go after this? Well, I would like to see Kane do what he does best and interfere in a few matches and cause a little mischief. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing him choke slam the hell out of tag teams left and right good guys bad guys don't matter I just want to see him cause havoc on the Smackdown roster I don't really see him doing that too much on the WWE side but I definitely see him doing that on the Smackdown side now is Kane going to continue working with Randy Orton I just don't see that happening I think that if Kane were to continue working with Randy Orton then something would have already went down now if they really aren't done with Kane and Randy Orton then one thing that they could do is they could have Kane do double duty they could have Kane make quick work out of Zack Ryder but then they could have Kane interfere in Randy Orton's match as there will be that fatal four-way dance for the world heavyweight title later during the show now I wouldn't mind seeing that happen that would make sense perfect sense as that would in a sense eliminate Randy Orton as he would be so consumed by Kane that the fight would just 
go out the arena and then it would be down to a triple threat match for the world heavyweight title so that's one way that they could do this but if they weren't gonna operate like this with Kane then the other option for them would be to just do like I said earlier just continue to have Kane sit up and cause havoc on the SmackDown roster but there really isn't too many people that could be a good match for Kane right now I mean honestly what I would like to do with Kane I would like to see him work a program with Sheamus now I'll get back to Sheamus in just a little bit but I think you kind of see where I'm going with this but I think Kane would be a perfect candidate to really work with Sheamus they're both big men Sheamus could put one heck of a great match and really make Kane look pretty good. I think it's exactly what Kane would need. Now, I know we got that audience that's out there that would like to see younger people. But when you talk about the SmackDown side of things, there really aren't too many big men that could take on Sheamus right now. So that's why I'm sitting up saying that maybe they kind of need to go with Kane at least for one month going into a pay-per-view just to see what they can do. And if nothing comes out of it, then hey, there's really no harm done. They could just move on to a new contender. But I'm very curious to see what those two guys can do together. Now, what should happen with Zack Ryder? Well, Zack Ryder, honestly, like I said, he's got that internet fan base. He has those YouTube followers. He's got those Twitter followers. Honestly, I would love to see Zack Ryder sit up, and I would like to see him tag team with somebody. I know they sat up, and they were hinting that whole Santino-Zack Ryder tag team. And I think they were calling them Santine Bro or something like that. I wouldn't mind seeing the two of those guys continue to work as a tag team and do double duty on Raw and SmackDown, but preferably SmackDown, as I think those two, they definitely gel well together. There's a whole lot of co comedic aspects to it. I definitely think they would sell a ton of merchandise. They would have some really great backstage segments. They would be like the Eric Young and ODB of TNA, but a little bit better. So I definitely would love to see those two continue to play that angle a little bit more. But other than that, that's really the only thing I see for Zack Ryder right now. If he were to continue going in singles competition, I just continue to see him being squashed as this current gimmick that he has it's really not getting him that far it's getting him the fans but it's not really getting him that united states title that intercontinental title the world or the wwe titles and that's not going to happen until he ditches the gimmick and becomes more serious so but for this match i'm definitely going with kane all right, let's go on to the next match that we got on the card, which is going to be the WWE Divas Championship as Layla takes on Beth Phoenix. Now, once again, Karma has been making news, and we have WWE Creative. They're sitting up basically saying that they don't have any stories for karma right now and that's why she's been kept off of television i find this really hard to believe i think this might be just one of those curveball type of deals here's what i would like to see happen if i were setting this up now we got layla who just came back after a year hiatus she won the wwe divas championship uh on an episode of I think it was at the pay-per-view actually yeah it was at the extreme rules pay-per-view where she beat nikki bella i believe it was for the divas title so she's been a champion for about a month now and we got a returning beth phoenix who's looking to regain her divas title now wwe creative they know that they have a money maker match 
with Beth Phoenix and Karma. So the real question is, do you really want to put the belt on Beth Phoenix this Sunday? Honestly, I wouldn't put the belt on Beth Phoenix. I think Layla should retain. Now, if they really cared about the Divas division, let me tell you how I would do this. If it's really a problem where Karma is sitting on the sideline and they can't really come up with a way to bring her back on WWE programming, here's a simple solution and this would be the night to do it. I would at some point have the lights go out and it's all pitch black as these two girls are getting it on in the ring. The next thing I would do after the lights have been off for several seconds, you turn it back on and you see the referee who just is laying on the ground somewhere and he is rubbing his head trying to figure out what the heck just happened and you see Beth Phoenix is just KO'd on her back and Layla is on top of her and the referee just counts one two three and Layla retains her title but then you're kind of curious what the heck just happened and this could be a really great scenario where this could happen for maybe a couple of weeks where every single time Beth Phoenix is involved in some type of a match and she's coming so close to becoming the Divas Champion, the lights just keep going out. And this could be a nice slow build for reintroducing Karma to the WWE and slowly trying to make her have her return and if they play this right they could have Karma reveal herself at the next pay-per-view I mean we got SummerSlam right around the corner she's been gone this long I mean at this point why not start playing with the idea and have her do little cameos here and there as the time draws near for SummerSlam and then just go all out that's the perfect way i would like to see this go down now we all know wwe they usually don't really sit down and actually come up with great storylines like that but i think that would be one hell of a way to bring back karma i think what's probably just going to end up here is layla is just going to pull an upset win over Beth Phoenix now if you were to ask me to bet some money and say if karma were to return on the pay-per-view this Sunday I don't see it happening I just don't see it happening they haven't done anything yet they just haven't done anything to even remotely hype up the return of karma so I definitely see Layla retaining her title what could happen next for Layla well, that's the thing. Layla really doesn't have any storylines right now. Layla is just basically, hey, I returned. I returned from injury. I'm the champion. Yay. That's pretty much what's going on with her right now. Um, as far as who could her next challenger be, not really sure. I kind of don't care. Because, no disrespect to Layla, I mean, she's very pretty and all, but there really isn't that many divas that are running around right now. Uh, I guess maybe after she's done with Beth Phoenix, maybe she could feud with Natalia, or maybe she could feud with Tamina Snuka. That would be kind of nice. I think the two of them could probably work a great match together. But with regards to Beth Phoenix... We got to have Karma start working a program. I think at this point, it's exactly what needs to happen. Uh, let's move on with the next match now. We got the WWE Tag Team titles as Kofi Kingston and R-Truth are defending it against Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler. All right, so we got a very, very great tag team match right here. I'm a little bit questionable about this because this could go either way because Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler they've been looking pretty impressive in recent weeks but so has Kofi Kingston and R-Truth so I'm not really sure which way to go in this match 
I I'm thinking about it man I would put it on Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler I know that we got Mason Ryan in the background there and he's supposed to be working with Dolph Ziggler eventually I wouldn't mind seeing Mason Ryan make some type of an appearance at the over the limit pay-per-view and maybe coming to the aid of Dolph Ziggler I definitely see these guys getting the tag team belts and I think they should get the tag team belts because with all due respect to Dolph Ziggler he has been asked to do a lot of silly stuff in recent weeks put people over and he really should be a WWE champion right now the guy just knows how to move in that ring every single time he comes on WWE program and the guy is always delivering he's like a young Shawn Michaels I mean I can't stress that enough folks this guy definitely needs to start getting his props I think Sunday night could be the restart of him getting his props again so I'm gonna go a little bold and I'm gonna say that Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler become the new WWE Tag Team Champions uh, what's gonna happen with Kingston and R-Truth not really sure I definitely would like to see them continue to be a tag team I wouldn't mind maybe seeing them work some type of a program with Darren Young and Titus O'Neil in the coming weeks as I think the four of those guys could put on one heck of a impressive match but I definitely see Kingston and R-Truth continuing to remain a tag team now I know some people are probably hearing this and probably saying well wait a minute Kingston and R-Truth they just got the belt from Primo and Epico do you really want to take the belts off of them that fast and put it on Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler Honestly, I think, yeah, I think they should go on ahead and do that because honestly, it doesn't really seem as if Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler are going to be breaking up anytime soon. On the other hand, this could be the camel that uh, break, breaks the back because Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler, they could lose this match on Sunday and then one really cool storyline could be Dolph Ziggler sitting up saying he's always sick and tired of being teamed up with Jack Swagger and that he feels like he's the one that's always carrying the workload between the two of them and that he brought his A game to the match on Sunday but that Jack Swagger didn't and this could set up a really nice situation where Mason Ryan gets involved and Jack Swagger uh, Dolph Ziggler they start feuding as Dolph Ziggler decides he wants to go back and pursue a singles career so it could happen here it could play out either way but with regards to who wins this match I'm going with uh, tough one see I just said Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler uh, all right, all right, all right. My mind's made up. I'm going to go with Kingston and R-Truth for, for the win. I got Kingston and R-Truth still remaining WWE Tag Team Champions. All right, let's move on to the next one. We got the World Heavyweight Championship in a fatal four-way dance as we got Sheamus defending his title against Alberto Del Rio, against Chris Jericho, against Randy Orton. Okay, so this is just a matter of elimination. Okay, let's get Chris Jericho out off the break because, as we all know, he's getting ready to take a leave very soon. And if y'all didn't check out the latest Chris Jericho article on WWE.com, I definitely recommend that you go check that out as it is a prelude to Chris Jericho possibly leaving because they all. They've already hinted that there could be some questions that Jericho may be asking himself if he does not win the World Heavyweight title come this Sunday. So definitely let's eliminate Chris Jericho. He's definitely not going to win this belt. 
Now, let's go with Alberto Del Rio. Vince McMahon, he loves this guy. He's been wanting him to become more aggressive in the ring. He loves that he has the looks, that he's a big guy. But Alberto Del Rio, he really hasn't been impressive since he's returned from his groin injury, I believe it was, that he sustained a couple of months back. I definitely don't see Alberto Del Rio becoming the new world heavyweight champion. So let's go on ahead and let's eliminate him. Now, Randy Orton. Randy Orton, he has been lost in the shuffle as of late since he's returned from injury. He has just only been working the program with Kane. Uh, I believe he was working a program with Jinder Mahal for a little bit. But other than that, he really hasn't been doing too much. I don't see him becoming the world heavyweight champion. So with regards to this match, I definitely see Sheamus retaining his title. Now, what should happen afterwards? I would like to see Sheamus maybe either work a program with Alberto Del Rio one-on-one -on -one or Sheamus work that program with Kane. Now, again, it would be really nice to see Kane interfere in this four-way dance. It may not happen, but I definitely would like to see it happen if I were writing it. That just makes really perfect sense to have him get involved in this contest. Um, but that's what needs to happen with Sheamus. I'd like to see Sheamus work with Alberto Del Rio or Kane next. Uh, Alberto Del Rio, same thing. I'd like to see him possibly continue to work some type of a program with Sheamus. I definitely want to see him continue to be in the title hunt. Chris Jericho, he's getting ready to take his little well-deserved vacation, so I'm fine with that. Randy Orton, I am definitely ready to see him get back to the top, but not with the current gimmick that he has right now he needs to go back to getting that personality he had when he was the legend killer he needs to go back and get that character that he was in a sense i think what probably needs to happen with randy orton right now especially if they really want to help out sheamus i think they need to make randy orton a heel again he just did it so well. He just seems a little bit lost right now as he's definitely been coming off as more of a baby face. I would love to see him go back to being a heel. And I think they really need a dominating heel right now. Because if we're going to have Chris Jericho, who's going to be leaving shortly, then we kind of need somebody that can definitely take his place. So I think Randy Orton would be a nice fit to just slide on in and pick up from where Jericho leaves off so I'm gonna go though with Sheamus for the win folks and in our next match we got two Ring of Honor alumni we got the WWE champion CM Punk defending his title against Daniel Bryan this is definitely going to be a really great match I'm surprised that we're getting this match now I thought it this match wasn't going to come for a few more months, at least a SummerSlam. Very shocked that we're getting this match now. Now, some people will bash this match because there really hasn't been that much of a storyline. And I can definitely respect where a lot of people are coming from. I think this is just going to be a series of matches that these two guys are going to have. If it's done right, I think these guys could probably work all the way up until SummerSlam. I definitely feel that these guys are definitely going to be the show stealer of the night at the pay-per-view. I feel it's going to be a five-star match all together. So these two guys right here, look at this match as just a official way of introducing these two guys to us. It's an introduction of their rivalry. I think that the meat and potatoes of a storyline is going to build the night after the pay-per-view. So with that in mind, I'm going to go with CM Punk for the victory 
and you can expect the very next night on WWE Raw that there's going to be a very bitter Daniel Bryan that is going to just be livid and is really just going to go to bat and talk some really great crap to CM Punk. I definitely see the storyline picking up on Monday night, the night after the pay-per-view. Now, we should keep in mind that sweet little AJ tried to have a few words with CM Punk on this past Monday night's Raw in a backstage segment, but CM Punk really wasn't trying to have any of it, as all she was trying to do was just wish him luck, but he didn't want to have any of that. I can kind of see her playing somewhat of a factor in this match. If I were writing this, I would love to see AJ actually make an appearance in this match. And I wouldn't mind seeing her try to be so bold as to try to help Daniel Bryan get the win over CM Punk. But I do not see CM Punk dropping this belt to Daniel Bryan. Vince McMahon has already given his seal of approval for Daniel uh, Bryan, but he's also given his seal of approval to CM Punk for being a WWE champion right now. I mean, he has so much respect for this guy. He doesn't want this guy taking time off to do movies. So you got Vince McMahon in your pocket like that, you definitely are locked. So he's not coughing up the title this Sunday, but their feud is definitely going to continue past this pay-per-view. You can rest assured on that. All right, and then we have the main attraction of the evening as John Cena is going to be taking on John Laronitis. And remember what's at stake here. If the general manager loses this match, he's going to be fired. Now, a lot of people, they're probably sitting up saying, ooh, 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 that's what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Ooh, he's going to get fired. I don't see him getting fired. I think that's just a really nice little monkey wrench to throw in there. We saw that John Laronitis fired Big Show. I just have the weirdest feeling that Big Show is going to pop up at the Over the Limit pay-per-view. And I just feel that he is going to play a serious role in destroying the hell out of John Cena. I definitely see John Laronitis walking away with this win. Now look, we got to remember the WWE Board of Directors, they said that this match needs to be a one-on-one -on -one that for John Laronitis... No WWE employee or whatever is going to be able to come to his aid. That it just needs to be a one-on-one -on -one match and he needs to get the job done. Now Big Show is no longer a WWE employee. So he's very rogue right now. Now you would think on the one hand, Big Show would interfere in this match. And get a little bit of revenge and take out John Laronitis. I don't see that happening. I see some really interesting stuff going on at this pay-per-view. I think that we're going to see Lord Tenzai with his manager as well as Big Show, probably David Otunga. I see some people that are definitely going to be popping up in this match. Probably post-match, but I definitely see Big Show coming out to help John Laronitis defeat John Cena. But post-match, I see John Laronitis, Lord Tenzai, Big Show, David Otunga. I really see all these guys going to work on John Cena. I still feel that John Cena is definitely going to be taking some time off because remember, he's got this whole thing that's going to be going on with his wife as he's in the process of probably going through a very ugly divorce right now. So he's definitely going to need to take a little bit of time away to take care of personal matters. Now, would Sunday night be the last time we see John Cena? I'm not really sure. We were led to believe that 
he was going to be taking some time off after the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, but here he is again at the Over the Limit pay-per-view, so we really can't say for certain, but I think at this point, you kind of need to focus more on home before you can focus on work. It wouldn't surprise me if John Cena gets butchered this Sunday and is off TV for a couple of weeks. I wouldn't mind seeing this happen just to see how Raw will really play out. But once again, John Laronitis, I got him definitely picking up the win. Now, let's just say for the sake of the argument, John Cena doesn't take any personal time off after the pay-per-view. What could possibly happen afterwards? Well, we could have the two of these guys continue their feud. Um... I'm very I wouldn't mind seeing these two guys work another program again. Um I think they're both interesting characters. I think they make things very interesting, but at the same time we can't have a weak finish like what we had on this past Monday night's Raw. We got to have a stronger finish than one guy slapping another guy and just rolling out. We can't have that. We got to have some really good meat and potatoes in there so if these two guys are going to continue working together the game definitely needs to step up but i got john laronite is definitely picking up the win and boosting about it the very next night on raw and who knows maybe triple h might have a few words with john laronitis and it could just go from there all right let's go ahead let's recap I've got Kane picking up the win in the pre-show over Zack Ryder. I've got Layla retaining her WWE Divas title against Beth Phoenix. I have Kingston and R-Truth retaining their titles against Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler. I have Sheamus retaining his title in the Fatal 4-Way match. And I have CM Punk retaining his title against Daniel Bryan. So I've got nothing but all retains in this pay-per-view. So once again, we got the WWE Over the Limit pay-per-view that's going to be coming this Sunday live at 8 p.m. Eastern. And at 11 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have the RCWR post show immediately following the pay-per-view. So definitely check that out. Call in, share your thoughts on the pay-per-view, how you either enjoyed it or disliked it. We definitely want to hear from you. Our chat room is definitely going to be open during the pay-per-view. Just follow us on Twitter at infinity one Prod. We're going to have the chat room open at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And definitely call in during the post show. Like I said, get your thoughts in on the pay-per-view. You can call us toll-free at 1-888-342-9848. Again, that's 1-888-342-9848. Definitely want to hear from you all and what you all thought about the pay-per-view. All right, so that is going to do it for the RCWR Call That Match special on the WWE Over the Limit pay-per-view. Until this Sunday for our, uh, for our RCWR post-show, I am the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders. And until Sunday for our RCWR post-show, you all be safe and be kind to one another. Have a great weekend, folks. See you this Sunday.